Welcome to this episode of Pen to Paper Press Podcast. I'm Cindy Coaches. I enjoy speaking with authors, writers, editors, publishers, and creative souls about the process of developing our stories to while completing our works of art. Each episode is an opportunity for us to explore mindsets, pearls of wisdom, and the experiences that began our journey as an author from the moment we put pen to paper. Dr. Don Menge has won 70 international awards as the author of the Queen Bernita Educational Series and Dragon's Breath. She holds a PhD in curriculum and instruction, a master's degree and a clear credential in moderate to severe disabilities, and a bachelor's degree in human development. Dr. Menge has been teaching students with severe cognitive delays for over 20 years. Thank you, Dawn, for taking the time to join me in the Pen to Paper Press podcast studio. It's great to have you here. Oh, thank you for having me. You are so very welcome. And there is so much to, to ask. And one of the things because we could go in the direction of you know of your students we could go into the direction of your books and of course that's where I want to (laughs) go is with your books and you know every book has a backstory every single one of them and at the heart of it there's the message that we the author wishes to share with our audience with your queen vernita educational series is there or no not is there i know there is (laughs) what is the overall message that you're relaying in that book series well as a teacher of course i'm teaching educational information Um, they're all based on rote learning so they have science facts and geography facts and so it's easier to learn that way and sometimes when people are reading the books they're expecting a like a fairy tale story or something like that they're educational the rote learning they're based on the days of the weeks and the months of the years and every month has a new friend and a new subject and I actually started writing it was an assignment in a math class when I was getting my credential so it was very educational when I started this and then when I just started to publish it I named it after my grandmother who is Renita And I put, yeah. And so the first one I did, it's pre-K to first grade and it has all of the children in our family. And so at the time I was only doing the one book and I thought they're not going to care. They're the kids in the family. They won't even, they won't even notice. This is my daughter. She's at the beach. (laughs) And so her birthday was in July. So I made everybody's um, page like their birthday and she's at the beach. And then we're, there's seven facts. And then I, I immediately won the Evie Award, which is out of Colorado. And I started getting interviews and people were asking me, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, that was it. You know, so when I started writing, I didn't think about the marketing or even writing more books or anything. And so we decided that I was going to you do traveling because I love traveling. My grandmother is a world traveler. And that's what it has become. And the message is obviously education, it's adventure, it's family, and I have my students in the book. So we're also teaching disabilities and tolerance and compassion and empathy. There's a lot of, um, like in one book we talk about um, seals and there's a seal preserve. And we talk about, I when I went to Kona, everything's based on my actual adventures. So we went to Kona and Kona has a place where they actually raise baby seahorses. And you really? can go there. Yeah, you can go there and they go through a tour. They teach you about the seahorses. <clears throat> and at the end, you put your finger in a tank and they wrap their tails around your finger. And so I've done that probably three times, I think now, taking my grandchildren. And, but it's teaching about the seahorses and you can actually go through the course and they will send you, you can buy a baby seahorse and raise this baby. And the last time we went to Kona, next door was they had octopus and it was a research facility, but you could go, you learn about the octopus and we got to go, they had, they were all in their own tank and, you know, we put our fingers in there and they wrapped their tentacles around us and we got to feed them. 
and they actually sprayed my grandson. And, oh no. <laughs> yeah, he didn't he didn't really like that, but it was kind of funny because they told us they were gonna do that, you know. And you know, when we went to seahorse, he was feeding the baby seahorse. And so there's so much education and wildlife and geography. And so there's a lot of messages in my book. That's wonderful. So what was it that I was gonna say what inspired you to write the book and and as you said it was part of your learning process uh for to earn a credential what was it that made you say this is what i'm going to write about to continue writing um it was the encouragement i got from everyone that i was going through a divorce and i needed something to to move towards you know to enjoy mm -hmm. so we started doing this and I actually, that's when I actually started with my PhD. And, you know, it kept me busy, kept me not thinking about what was going on. And it's just, it's just fun, you know. I, some, I, at first it would, it'd be like, well, where am I going to go to write a book about? Now, you know, we do so much traveling that it's, we're just traveling. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if I could make a book about this. And what would I make it about? Like for Thanksgiving, it was in 2015, I believe we went. I just actually published this one um, last year. And there were 19 family members and we went to Williams, Arizona. Okay. And we wrote, there's a train that goes from there to the Grand Canyon. So we all rode the train. And then we came back, put our gemmas on and rode the Polar Express. So there were 70, the ages were 77 to, I believe two, my son, grandson. And this is actually my grandson. So oh, it was the two or three. Santa? Oh, yeah. that is so precious. Yeah, he was so tired. He just fell asleep in Santa's lap. So that's the cover of the book. And so the whole book is um, like this is, this one is, this is my grandson looking out the window. So then who, who painted all the pictures for you? I actually found my illustrator at a book event and she came, well, she came, she was actually drawing for my brother. He had written um, a graphic novel. And so she was doing it. I don't know where he found her. And then I started talking to her. So then she started doing my illustrations and she has just really just grown so much. And these are actual pictures of our trip. So she takes the actual pictures and she makes an illustration out of them. So this would be my, my granddaughter, Madison. And she was actually, it was cold. So she was blowing on it and making a face, but we have the actual picture of this. And so they become the books and this one is pre-K to first grade, and it's just talking about adventure. And when I actually first started doing doing this, I was going to do it on the Grand Canyon, the train okay. ride in the Grand Canyon. And then I thought, I need more pre-K books. So I just made it on Santa Claus, the Polar Express, the train ride, the bandits. You know, they, they had these horses follow us, and they jumped on the train. And, you know, they, they were actually holding up my grandson. <laughs> and so I took I made that picture into the illustration. So these are my grandson. Wow. And, and so and then what I did is because I like to use like different people in different names. I don't want just my family in the book. Right. Bobby was actually my assistant in my classroom. So I incorporated him into the bandit. And so he gets to be in the book. And so it's just it's just a lot of fun and it, it teaches people. And I I read this for a podcast in the UK and it has like over a thousand downloads in two weeks. And um, I read it on, um, so uh, Adventures with Grammy, I think it's called. I read it on her podcast and another one right before Christmas. And so it's just fun and it's adventuresome. And I did an interview with someone from St. Louis and he was talking to his friend about me and she had been checking my books out at the library with her son, reading them. And she actually got a second job so that she could travel because of my books. How interesting. And if I hadn't done that interview, I would not have known any of that because people don't tell you that. Well, no, no. Unless no? they specifically send you a letter. How would you yeah. know? And they, they don't. Rarely do they do that. <laughs> Well, so if anybody's out there, <laughs> if you're reading books, tell the authors, tell them you're reading their books, <laughs> tell them what you like, because you buy the book and unless someone tells you or leaves a review or something, you don't know if anybody actually read it. 
Uh, good you know? point. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, yeah, very good point. Because <laughs> you know the numbers that you know that you see online and at the different outlets where your book are sold. You know, to see that number rise up, that's awesome. But you don't know if it was if somebody actually read it, if it didn't yeah. have an impact, <laughs> or if it ended up stacked up on top of that. Yeah, I'm going to read that pile that's on a nightstand. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I do, um, I go to book events and parents will tell me, oh, we read your story every night. I'm like, I don't know that. <laughs> I'm glad I came. I'm glad you told me that. You That's know? wonderful. You know? So then with your books, each book then is centered on a location that you go to. So where are some of the places that you have been? So the queen travels around her kingdom and meets the different people in the different areas in her kingdom. So the queen, I think, believe this might have been my third book. So this is my little brother. His name is Heath. And when he was little, he's nine years younger than I am. I called him Heathy Bean. He's an astronomer at JPL. Okay. So we wrote a book together and it's called Queen Brainy to Meet Sir Heathy Bean, the Astronomer. And he wanted to be the professor with the, with the hair. Oh, the with the wild hair. And <laughs> so he's teaching all about astronomy. And in this book, I also added disabilities. So this is Jeremy, and he has okay. Down syndrome, and he was my student. And so there's just seven facts about that. And I think he's learning about Pluto. And the one thing I do this is because the children are living their lives. Mm -hmm. They're living their lives. They're learning about astronomy but they have a disability. So this one, this one is Jake and he was my friend's um, adopted son and he has cerebral palsy. Okay. So the astronomer is teaching him about astronomy, but he, we're also talking a little bit about cerebral palsy, but we're showing that he's learning and he's outside and he's adventuresome. And so it kind of puts everyone in a different light than oh, this child has a disability, so, you know. And so that's how I try to present the children in my books. So, so this is not only educational in regards to the location, but it also helps to broaden that spectrum or the assumption of what it's like to travel with someone or meet someone or, or what it's like for someone who has some kind of a disability and that's interesting how you weave that in. So what was the inspiration or was there a particular person that when you started adding your students into the book, you know, that you're like, I have to add them? Um, normally it's based on my relationship with that person. Okay. So, you know, to, to put themselves out there like that, they have to one, really trust me and believe in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And we have to know each other well enough for them to do that. So th this is when I actually started entering my, my series has won 70 awards. I counted over Christmas break. And the one thing they won is I started entering them into film festivals. So I entered this into the Conquering Disabilities was Film Festival. And my whole series won the Special Recognition Champion Award. We went to Las Vegas in July and got the award. And they actually played my book trailers on the big screen, which is really exciting. That is. But the reason I got to, I entered the astronomy one in this one, this one is based on Kona, Hawaii, which I spent a lot of time going to. But this little girl has Rett syndrome and this is her mom and they're making lays for their classmates. And so the queen is helping them make it, but she, they're explaining why she needs help and what Rett syndrome is. So you're seeing this child who's enjoying their, their life they go to school, they have friends, and they're making something really nice for their friends. And then this little boy was my student, and his name was Connor, and Connor, Connor had autism. And this okay. is his dad, Steve, and they're at the Volcanic National Park. But Connor's nonverbal, so he uses a communication device. So he's teaching the queen about his communication device, about autism, and why he's using it. So a child is reading this, they're learning about volcanoes, but they're also learning about a communication device. And if they see a child on campus that has one, they know what it is. 
and they're they won't think oh that child gets to play video games or <laughs> anything like that yeah. they're like oh wait he's using it to communicate let's pay attention to that and and then the fun part of the books is this picture i know you guys can't see but it's a, a boy who is snoopling he has a huge helmet and he, we went down about 10 feet we actually did this in tahiti and this that picture was originally my son he was 16 okay. at the time and he traveled with me and my mom so poor guy he had to travel with his grandma his mom <laughs> and his grandma but we went down and we were actually feeding the fish the, the spread and so they just encircled him and so this became the, one of the illustrations and we went to oahu and i wanted to go swimming with the sharks in, our, in the shark cage so we all my kids went i had one grandchild at the time and we all piled in the car and drove on the other side of the island and went 10 miles out into a shark cage. And wow. it was really fun. Um, I went in first with the boys. And so we were like touching them, which you're not supposed to do, but we were. But it was so fascinating <laughs> to watch them come up and circle. And they weren't like great whites or anything. But my daughter was on the top and she was feeding the shark. And so she saw them coming out of the water and it was very impressive. And she wouldn't go into the cage. So I think that I have, if I had done that first, I would not gone into the cage. <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> she, saw, she saw them eating, you know, eating and being aggressive and everything. And we didn't see that part. We They were just swimming around the cage. But I did one also on New Orleans. Okay. And then this one is sixth grade because it talks about um, slavery plantations the Underground Railroad. So this one is the Underground Railroad. Okay. And so the context, there's a lot, there's a lot of information. And because each page is different then people, if someone's reading the book and they're interested in um, whatever the subject is, mm -hmm. then they can, they can go look that subject up. But one thing we did was we went into the bayou. Okay. And we were in a jet boat and there was probably about six of us, six or nine of us. And it was thunder and lightning. So we actually had to hide underneath a moss tree. So we didn't get electrocuted <laughs> and wait. And then the, this man, this is the man. And uh -huh. he drove up on like this mound of grass, gets out, gets a fish and starts making this weird noise. And then you could see these huge eyes coming up out of the water. And they were the alligators. They were coming up and they came up really close. They must've been less than five feet from us. And so it was just really fascinating. And then he gets on and he hands me a baby alligator to hold. And I was just holding him and touching his stomach. And then when I posted the picture, somebody said, well, you know, they bite. And I'm like, oh, I, you know, you're not thinking about that. You know, it was just so <laughs> exciting, you know, but so everything's based on adventures. I have one on Alaska. We went kayaking um, to the glaciers and we had a crab feast and um, we went, um, quad riding out into the tundra and we went whale watching. And so all of this is on the, this is more fourth grade. We went to Sitka and we went um, scuba diving in um, Sitka, Alaska in dry suit. And so that was, that was really interesting. And then I have another one on Kona. This is probably maybe the second book I wrote. And it's actually based on my friends. They live in Kona and it's about sea captain Jeff and enchantress Carrie. And all of the things in the book we did, we went snorkeling and with the turtles and there's dolphins. And um, we went down into a lava tube and it was just like this hole in the ground in the middle of a pasture. Mm -hmm. And we went down in the lava tube and we hiked down to the bottom and went swimming in it. And so if you go into like my Facebook and some of my social media, all of those pictures of our actual trips they're in, they're in the albums for the books. So people can see if they want to show their children, look, we really did this. And so it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun for me. <laughs> and <laughs> this one I did, I just published it this year. I published five this year. This one, we go up to the central coast of California to Halama Beach and we go camping every year. And there's usually over 20 of us. And so I just published this one. It's got fishing and camping and s'mores making and raccoons and there's an ostrich farm there so i put the ostriches in there and it's just a lot of fun how interesting so then how is your writing process 
you know, what is your writing process? Do you, do you set like an idea for a book and then go to the destination, experience it and then write it? Or do you just go someplace, experience it and then write the book? What is your process? Actually, I've done both. Um, I've like, when we were doing the pandemic, we, my children set up, now they're almost in their forties. I have three children and now I have six grandchildren, but they set up all these camping trips. So we would go, we went to Zion and the Grand Canyon and the Sequoias and we would be doing things. And I'd say, I meant this is going to be a book someday. So then I start taking pictures based on what I would want to write about. You know, like we went, they, they went riding their bicycles on the rim. So okay. one, one of the page will be that they're riding bicycles on the rim. We stayed at a KOA and there was um, go-karts. So that'll be in there. And, you know, just the kind of different things that we did. And there's one thing I wanted to do is there's actually a cavern a little ways out of the Grand Canyon. And you can actually sleep in the cavern. And so that's like something I'd like to try for the book. Um, I haven't gotten anybody wanted to do it with me yet. <laughs> but, you know, so that that's kind of on the back burner of what I want to do. Um, I want, I would do one on Zion and these would be higher, like fourth and fifth grade, sixth grade, maybe. Um, so I haven't done those yet because there'd be a lot more of geography, geography information. Right. But the one thing I did this summer is I had a family that they were kind of like my second family when I was growing up and it have been 10 years ago, the dad and I were talking about writing a book. And so he actually wrote me over the pandemic and he said, well, when are we going to write the book? And I'm like, oh, okay. So that's the summer we went on a road trip, my mom and I, and we went up through Yosemite, uh, Yellowstone, I'm sorry, Yellowstone, and then down into Wyoming. And I spent a week and they showed me around and we decided what we were going to write about. And her, their whole family is the book. So really? that's, the, that's the one thing that um, I'm finishing right now. My illustrator is just finishing the last illustration. And so I'm going to be writing that one. And so that one I was asked to write, you know, it, it was specific for that. So I've done both. Okay. And obviously you're doing a lot of research um, when you're there and then probably afterwards to make sure that you have information correct or, you know, accurate. Um, another question that I'm curious about is when you're there and you're experiencing it, are you journaling with the intent of making the book, you know, when you already know that, okay, this experience is going in a book. Yeah. So then what kind of details are you writing to make notes? Or is it in a journal or is it just a notebook that's got notes in it? It's just a notebook. And um, I do I do a lot. I do a lot of picture taking. Okay. So that's a lot of my journaling. And then I will write notes on specifically, especially like with that family. I interviewed them and what do you want to be about? And then if that person's page, what are their interests? You know, what is it they want to be doing? Um, like the mom, she she was a nurse. And so I wanted to do something where she was the nurse and kind of find out she likes frogs. She's really into frogs. <laughs> and so there's a story about these frogs at the hospital. So she told me the little story that happened. And so in her page, she's wearing a frog smock, you know, for, for the nursing. And then there's all these frogs around her. And so, and the saying that she said is going to be in her page. And then there was another little, the little girl that was in the family. She, I think she's 14 and she'd just come back from band camp. So she was sitting there and I was talking to her like, what do you like? What are your, so she plays the ukulele. So in the story, her and her dad are playing the ukulele in the gazebo. And so she's telling us how there was a hill by the high school where everybody sled. So the hill's in the background. So you just find out the history of the, of the place, what they like to do. And then you just build the story around that. So that was really fun to do because it's really personal for them. That does sound very interesting. The fact that the story is not from your, it's from your point of view to an extent, but truly it's actually their point of view. Yeah. I'm not in the book at all. From, <laughs> with Queen Vanita. Now, is she in all of these books or? Yeah, the Queen Vanita character is part of the books. Um, but since I'm actually, it's named after my grandmother, but I'm actually like the person that's doing the traveling and stuff. So it's kind of me, it's me, but it's my grandmother. <laughs> 
So I'm in the book that way, but as personally being in the book, I've only been in, I think it was in my Alaska book. And okay. that's the only one I've, I think that I've actually ever been in. Interesting. So, so then you're interviewing these people, you're asking them, what do you like? What don't you like? What are you enjoying? Uh, what do you do? Um, and then you're taking notes, you've got it in a notebook. And then when you get back home, does the story just come to you? You know, do you just sit down to a typewriter? Well, my typewriter tells you how old I am. Um, <laughs> do you sit down to a keyboard? I'll word it that way. <laughs> and then uh, write the story or, you know, what is your process when you get home then? Well, when I get home is we start working on the illustrations. And then um, there was, they're based on whatever we've decided to do. And then when I get that, I have to wait until I really feel it to start it. Okay. So I haven't really felt, felt ready to start writing it. We're still, I, I just wrote one with a co-author who was amazing. And we wrote one on a bed and breakfast in Hacienda. It's called Hacienda Linda in Tucson, Arizona. And <laughs> it's got, um, camels and Diwali and day of the dead. And it's, it's really epic. I have the illustrations, right? Some of them right here. We just did an interview Friday. Um, and we're trying to get it out. He keeps trying, finding mistakes in it. So I told him he needs to stop doing that. <laughs> so we can get it published. But this is, um, this is actually my occupational therapist and her family. And they're from India. That's a and beautiful is, picture. And yeah, my illustrator is just getting just amazing. But she, she was from India. So she told us, we had, we interviewed her and she told us all about her childhood and what, what they like to eat and all of that. And so we incorporated what they like to eat into what is native in Tucson. And they're having this festival in the courtyard of the bed and breakfast. And I'm just, I'm trying to get the book out. We've been working, this one we started 10 years ago. <laughs> you know, I, I love the fact that you mentioned uh, a few minutes back that you published five in a year. And then now you're saying, you know, because to me, that's really impressive. I mean, like, wow, five books in a year. And then you're saying, well, this one's taken me 10 years. <laughs> that, you know, that, you know, goes to show that when the timing is right, the timing is right. And if there's, there's typically a reason that it's being held off, you know, divine reason or, or whatever your beliefs are. And, you know, that's, that's interesting. So thank you for, you know, putting in that it's not perfect process. You know, oh, I no, just not at all. These things yeah. out. No, no. <laughs> well, the only reason I could do five in one year is because we started teaching at home. And so I couldn't do any book events. So I'm like, okay, now I'm going to get these books out because I had a goal where I was going to do one a year. And then, you know, like you get busy and things happen. And so right. now I'm like, I'm going to catch up because I've done the traveling. I've done the research. And so we did that. And my illustrator was wonderful. She was just getting them out there. But we, at, I, he was someone I knew when I was 16 and we reconnected through the school and he worked at the University of Arizona. And this is when I first started publishing. And so we would go out there and go, the university has this huge book festival. So we would go to the book festival and then he, you know, we'd get to visit with them. And in fact, I only went to the book festival to visit with him and his wife. And so we actually started talking about it 10 years and then things happened and stuff. And it's totally different than when we started 10 years ago. It's a totally different book. So I'm glad that we did wait mm -hmm. because now it's even better. And this is one, this is the day of the dead one. And this is actually him and he's cooking. And then one of the one with the red hair is the owner of the bed and breakfast. And then this is the queen. And so it just talks about that, but it's, it's just, um, it's just fun. <laughs> It's a lot of work, a lot it of is, work. It is a, a lot, lot of work. work. So then for somebody who's looking to do an illustrated book, what is your pearl of wisdom for getting out there and marketing it or promoting it? Um, what I did when I started, I started having, you have to be careful with, there's not everybody out there is, you know, doing the right thing. There's a lot of plagiarism going on. And so I did run into some of that. And so I started joining like the SCBWI, the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. Okay. That's the best thing I ever did. I started going to their conferences and their workshops and their, it, they, they're so much fun, but I learned a lot from them. 
And the one thing that I really learned was when they they'd go up there and they talk about their books. You know, people are making they're making movies out of their books, and they would go up there and they would tell you, you know what? And one lady, she actually taped all of her rejections, and it went all the way across the stage. And she said, this is how many times I was rejected before I was picked up, you know, and there is a New York Times bestselling author. And he's the one who really inspired me when I was really just tired because it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And he said, he said he self-published, he did this, he did that. And he has a speech called yes. And you start saying yes to opportunities because you don't know what one opportunity is going to lead to another opportunity. And so I started doing that and I became a literary judge for now two different um, three different children's contests. I uh, actually, and then I judge um, a romance um, section for Indie. It's called Indie Tales Magazine. And I also write book reviews for Story Monster Magazine. I do a lot of events for them. I belong to the United States Board on Books for Young Children. And I'm on the committee to pick books for and about children with disabilities. So my author journey has just like expanded to things that I never thought that I would be doing. <laughs> Isn't that always interesting how life just kind of says, here, go this way. Oh, yeah, try oh, this. That way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then how do you, so you've got a book that's, you know, you're close to, to publishing. So then as far as getting it out there so people know that you have this, what is some of the first things that you do to let people know that, hey, I've got a new book? <laughs> I do interviews and I do a lot of, uh, like you do giveaways. I do a lot of promotion on my websites. My my publisher does it. Um, I do as much as I can. I go to events and promote my books. And then with... Well, with everything that's happened the last couple of years, obviously, a lot of that has changed that in person yes. Yes. Uh, interaction. So from what you're seeing, uh, are you seeing more of the those events becoming open or being scheduled now for this upcoming season? They're starting to like when at first when this first started, I was supposed to go to New York City and have this big book event at the book con in Times Square and I didn't get to go. <laughs> and I was supposed to go to the BEA with um, with the pub, Simon, it's a part of Simon and Schuster, that got canceled. And I just saw that it, it's rescheduled. So before I buy my airline ticket though, I'm gonna wait because you never know what's gonna happen. Right. But I like they're trying to, and I don't know if it's gonna be able to continue. I mean, I hope so, but I know that, you know, I'm a teacher, so schools are starting to shut down again. But briefly, this time it is only for two weeks, I say, but last time it was two weeks and it ended up to be 18 months. But, you know, um, but I do a lot more. I really took the opportunity to do a lot more interviews. And I have talked to people from New Zealand and Ireland and Dubai and, you know, India. And I did a on one of the book sites on Facebook, a lady was looking for authors for for her school. Come to find out it was in Paraguay. So really? I did, yeah, I did a book reading for second graders in Paraguay. Like that would have never have happened. <laughs> no, no. You know, and I, I ran to a lady from Jamaica, did some interviews with her. She actually had me do part of a thing for the high schoolers there. We talked about publishing and writing and in Jamaica. And I interviewed with a lady from Australia who apparently is like this really high person. And I didn't know that, but I, you know, we had an interview, we talked about my students a lot and what we do with our students. And then I wrote an article for her magazine. And um, I just did this, it's, I did an anthro part of an anthology for the pandemic. And this was published in Ireland and it so just came out. What's the title of that? She has three of them out. A uh, hundred empowered voices. Okay. Yeah, so it's how everybody, it's how hundred different women um, dealt with the pandemic and what happened. And I, I saw that and I thought, I'm going to try that. So I did it and I got published in it. And so that's exciting. Now I'm an internationally published author. Yes, you are. <laughs> you know, I, I would not, that would not have happened if I hadn't have tried, you know, written for a magazine in Australia or, you know, this. So you just have to say yes and try stuff. 
are you making these contacts through Facebook or is it through the groups that you're, you've joined, you know, the organizations? These international ones are through the Facebook groups. Interesting. Yeah, they're all through the Facebook groups. So somebody who is really terrified of putting themselves out there, <laughs> which includes the majority of authors oh, because it's hard <laughs> yeah is there you know is there something you would say to you know okay say hey, let's put me in that position i'm i'm a great guinea pig in that regard <laughs> say i'm really terrified and dawn you know how how do you do that what where did you get your courage from you know to get up there and do these speeches how you know <laughs> well in person, um, no. <laughs> no, when I when I went to the movie the movie thing, um, I won an award, and of course everybody's giving these wonderful speeches, and I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, I don't like talking in public, and you know, like this, but I'm better at this. But at first, it was hard. There was a lot of stumbling over my words. What am I going to talk about? You know, and it's it's scary to put yourself out there. It is. You know, you're you're putting yourself out there and you're worried that someone's going to criticize you, but you know what? People are going to criticize you. I mean, that's just what they do. So mm -hmm. don't, don't take it to heart unless it's something valid in your life. Then yeah, they, then listen to what they say. You know, it's your journey. And that's the one thing I always say about authors. It's like people say, but I don't have anything to say. Nothing's happened to me. My life is boring. And it's like, no, everybody has something they need to say to the world. Mm -hmm. And if you connect with one person, you've done your job. Mm -hmm. And when you're out there and you're doing events or talking or whatever, you really need to feel the audience and pay attention to what their responses are, because you might go there with one thought, okay, this is what I'm going to teach. This is what I'm going to show them. But there might be somebody out there who's picked on something, picked up on something that is to you would be very minor, but to them, it's important. And for an example, my brother and I went to an elementary school and I read my book to must have been 40, 45 kindergartners, but he did the third graders. So his took longer. So I was standing in the back of the, of the group and he introduced me and who I was and what I did. And this little boy, he just starts talking away and he connected with me and what I did on my job, not my books, but my job, because his little sister had just passed away and she was in one of our classrooms. Oh no. And, right. So he really connected with me and he opened up and he talked about it in front of everyone. And later the teacher said that he hadn't been talking for like six weeks. And so this was an opportunity for him to just connect with someone else and say, oh my gosh, this happened to me. And if we had not stopped what we were doing and talking about astronomy and not listen to him and let him talk and let him do what he needed to do. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have been able to do that. And so you have to pay attention to what your audience is saying. Right. Yeah. To the reaction and follow their lead as such. Because, you know, like I mentioned at the prior to hitting the record button, you know, usually I will write out the questions for our, you know, for a podcast interview. Typically it's the morning of, or sometimes it's like, that hour before <laughs> and actually a couple of times it's been like five minutes before <laughs> um you know but it's because it, it's intuitive and like I mentioned with you at the very beginning um prior again to hitting the record button is I I had like one question and if let me see if I can bring it up the question that I had was for every book uh for every book written there's a backstory and at the heart of it there's a message that we the author wishes to share what's the running theme or message in the queen uh vernita series that's really the only question because anything else that i had written down which was like uh which book did you publish first and it, i guess i did ask if there was a specific person but that's it. That's all that I have on here. And it was, <laughs> you know, it to me, that was that connection sign that the conversation is going to lead the podcast. And it has. I mean, truly, I've 
I've only asked you really the one question. <laughs> and that was, you know, with the intent of asking a question, you know, who was the inspiration? That question was an automatic into the conversation. It flowed in. So, you know, again, like you said, it's, it's following the lead of the conversation being shared. It's, it's really interesting how when we allow ourselves that freedom to not be scripted, <laughs> what we can accomplish and what, what we discover along that journey. Yes. yes. And is there any words of wisdom or is there any insight that you would like to share with a with an author that is looking to do an illustrated children's book? You need to be careful who you're hiring to do the illustrations. Um, there's a lot of people that, I mean, it happened to me. I hired someone and I gave her just not a lot of money, but I gave her money to start and I never got an illustration. So just be really careful who you're hiring. Make sure they're legitimate. Make sure you're going to get what you asked for. Oh, and something happened to someone on one of the groups. He put his, I think it was the cover of his book and it was really cool. And then somebody, thankfully he put it on the group and someone said, uh, and they went, it was, they actually had plagiarized someone's book <gasps> and they just copied it and like changed, changed the colors. And, you know, he had to stop the printing and change it. But if he had not posted that, he would not have known that. So you need to be really careful because you cannot plagiarize other people. No. You know, they need to be your ideas. And another thing that I learned along the way is you've, you've really got to say yes. You know, you, you think this is going to be your path, but you don't know what your path is going to be. So you need to be open to doing this or doing that, trying new experiences. Every new experience leads to different people. Mm -hmm. And like the one thing I did, I had an interview with this, with this woman and it was on Instagram and she was just starting this magazine. Pros Prosperity. Prosperity, okay. Prosperity magazine. And so she let me write an article about my students and we do this thing called workability and my students are working in the community. And I, so I wrote an article about my students and then we got, I got to show it. But if I had not been open to doing that interview, it, then I could not have done this and done some more, some more teaching about my students. So when I started that interview, did I know that it was going to go that direction? No, because we were actually talking about divorce, I think. <laughs> you know, and so I just went this other way. So you just have to really be open to, to what's going on. Like this book, this isn't part of the Queen Bernita series. I actually um, dated someone and then someone stalked me and caused me a lot of trouble. So I actually wrote a book about it. And, and that's the Dragon's Breath. Okay. The Dragon's Breath. And I just published it last year. I actually wrote it several years ago. And it's just, it talks about the dragon. And I incorporated the things that had happened to me in this experience. Like she came to my house and she said that she saw this black cloud over my house. So I had, and she said I was a dragon slayer. So I made her the dragon. <laughs> and she's blowing black smoke on the village. And, you know, so I just incorporated the different things that had happened to me into this story. And that's how you build a story. People say they don't have anything to write about, but you do. Mm -hmm. You do. You have lots to write about. Yes. Well, in one saying that I have coined for years and years and years, because I used to have a digital magazine uh started it back in 2015 or 16 and and it i published a total of 15 issues but um one of the uh sayings that i had told the writers was you know write what comes to you you know write from the heart and your words have power your story matters and so when I started doing the whole pen to paper press podcast, that phrase was so strong that I share that your words have power and mm. your story matters. Yeah, and, awesome. you know, a lot of people, you're right, do, oh, well, nobody wants to know that or nobody's right. going to care. Everybody's experienced that. Who hasn't been through whatever? 
but it's different for each of us because it's our perceptions, it's our experiences, it's the perception of the people who are involved. There's similarities, but they're not the same. And that's why, you know, you can sit and read a hundred um, rom-coms, you know, or uh, like your romance novels. They're all different, even though they may follow the, you know, like Hallmark Channel. You know, you <laughs> watch the same plot. They so have the, the same has a business that's going out of business and this man comes and he saves her. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody meets a prince and, you know, <laughs> trauma happens or chaos happens and somehow she ends up with the prince at the end. Yes. But it's our own it's our own twist it's our own perception and yeah yeah. and it's not always about following the leader either that's that's a key (laughs) so I I truly do want to say thank you for taking the time Dawn to to be here to sit in the in the virtual pen to paper press podcast (laughs) studio Looking at my background of the bison that I took uh, this picture hey, I've last learned year. Something new. Now I know. Yes, yes, you know that Texas has bison and yes. that this is the native breed and <laughs> and so forth. And you know, it is. It's interesting. Um, we may think we have a uh, a boring life, but to somebody else. Right. They're looking at it going, whoa, that's so cool. Well, and, <laughs> and I did a lot of things about what happened to me like at my home and stuff because there was a lot of gaslighting. There's a lot of, and so people look at you and you have all these accomplishments and they go, well, nothing bad happened to you. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, bad things have happened. And so you share the experiences and it's going to connect with someone else who's having those experiences and doesn't understand them or doesn't identify them or doesn't know what to do about it. And so you're just yes. helping helping them along because you're a, you're not like a counselor or a therapist telling them what to do. No. You're someone in, who experienced it and they can connect with that. Right, well, and that's key. And well, that's the whole point of sharing our story. You know, right. we, we're more apt to learn through storytelling than somebody handing us a set of instructions and saying, right. here you go. Yeah because it's the emotion it's the it's the experience it, it's the well what happened next oh oh my gosh you survived this how did you survive this or what did you do or oh you had that much fun well what did you do cuz i'm curious i want to go do the same thing so again it's through that storytelling that we really uh, expand our minds and and our experiences so but, Um, Oh, before I end, where can people find you on the internet? (laughs) (laughs) Well, my books are, you know, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, any any place online, really. My publisher is Rushmore Press. I have a website, Dr. Dawn Menge. It's not up to date, doesn't have all my books on it. But I have a Facebook, Dawn Menge One, and you can see all the albums, all the books, and all the things we do. You can contact me through there. I also have an Instagram, Dawn Menge, and a Twitter, Queen Bernita. How wonderful. And I'll have in the show notes, I will have a link to your website and to the books on Amazon. So thank you. I I appreciate your time and have fun with all of those wonderful adventures you keep going on. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you for having me. You are welcome. Before we end our time together, I'd like to say thank you for listening to my conversation with Dr. Dawn Menge. To access her website and purchase the books she has written, visit pentapaperpress.com backslash podcast and select the show notes page for this episode. To receive future episodes in your inbox, subscribe to the newsletter, and of course, follow the podcast on your favorite applications. You are invited to share your favorite episodes with individuals you feel will resonate with the content. Take care, and until next time, Keep your pen to paper and write. Your words have power and your story matters. Bye for now.